Well, okay, I think it's about time I uh, address this topic. I've been getting email after email about this, so yeah, time, time for me to actually uh, sort this out. Let's talk reflectance. Now, this video is not gonna be a big, heavy, in-depth, um, advanced thing. This is really just gonna be to sort out the basics. How do you use it? What should you bother with? And what should you not waste your time on? So let's go take a look. Here we go, here's our reflectance. So this was brought in uh, about a year ago now. Um, and it's been confusing a lot of people ever since. Um, so yeah, let's, let, let's, let's show you. Um, if you're working on reflectance, usually the first thing you should do is get rid of this specular. Now, specular for the uninitiated is this kind of um, soft sheen that the object has. It's a, it's like a tacky fake reflection. So step one is get rid of this. We simply do not need this. So remove, you can go. And then the next step is gonna be to add something else. So let's add in. Hmm, right, okay, here's our first hurdle. Which is which, what do you use them for? Which one should you be picking? And the simple answer is, if you're just after a reflection, just a nice shiny object, go for Beckman. Um, the first four are very, 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 very similar, as in so similar, you would probably struggle to really notice much difference between them. They have their uses, but you know what, don't worry about it for now. So let's go Beckman. And then we've got this old mess. Uh, yeah, what, what's all of this? What are all these sliders for? Um, the, the trouble in my experience that most people have is that there are simply too many controls and you don't really know which one you're supposed to be using. So let's take something simple. How do you control how strong the reflection is? Because, well, we've got a slider here which does it and we've got a slider here which does it and another one here and another one here and depending on what you unfold, another one here. There are a good six, seven, eight sliders at least which all control the brightness of your reflection. So which one is it? Which one should you be using? Well, the answer is number one. This is the slider you should use to be controlling your reflection strength. Again, the others have uses, but they're few and far between to be brutally honest. So if you're just trying to control how strong this reflection is, let's just... Um, change our base material. So let's say our color is orange, nice bright orange. Then with our reflectance, initially at 100% for layer number one. So layer number one, by the way, this is our Beckman reflection that we added a few moments ago. And if I can change how strong this reflection here is, then we'll start getting some of the yellow coming through and all the way down to having a, a matte finish on the object. So yeah, just use that first slider to uh, change the reflection strength. Now, what else is worth knowing about? What else is worth doing for just your normal day-to-day -day tasks? Well, the next thing is gonna be roughness. This is a measurement of how crisp and clear your reflection will be. So with no roughness, you will have this nice, highly polished, uh, shiny reflection. But as this thing creeps up, and You've usually got to get it above a good five or ten percent before you really notice it. So I'm just going to jump straight in about twenty. Oh, look at that accurate click. Um, yeah, there you go. You'll get a nice, soft, sort of almost um, powder-coated, scratchy plastic, uh, electro-coated finish on your object. Um, word of warning: this will increase your render times quite noticeably, um, depending how much of it takes up your image. We're talking at least doubling, tripling, or quadrupling your render time. So do consider whether or not you can actually afford to have this effect turned on. I'll be turning it off for now. Um, and the last of the sort of uh, basic main day-to-day -day settings is color. So color is typically what you're gonna use for metals. So a fairly common question, how do you do gold? How do you do copper? How do you do bronze? How do you do precious metals, basically? Um, a mistake most people will make is that they'll stick the color of the metal in the color settings. And yeah, this is actually a fairly obvious intuitive thing to do, but it's not how you should. Um, instead, what you'll notice is if you go for, a, let's say, let's say you're trying to make gold. If I put this sort of a golden color, in my color settings, well, what we'll actually end up with is a 
a yellow shiny thing which is not very helpful at all. The key generally to getting a good metal is either turn the color channel off or turn down the brightness quite uh, significantly. I'm just going to turn it off. I'm simply going to take this one out of the equation. I'll return back to my reflectance. I'll pop it back up at full strength for now. Uh, but yeah, coloring. Color, color the actual reflection it creates. Because if I go for some sort of um, orangey gold, there you go. That's it. That's how you make gold. You want this to be copper instead? Well, let's just go for a bit more of a, a warm salmon color. There we go. Now we've got a nice shiny polished copper finish. Uh, maybe some anodized blue metal for a car parts. Or as I'm recording this, Christmas is just coming up. So maybe a nice green for a Christmas ball ball. Maybe a nice bright red. Basically, yeah, throw your color into the color option of reflectance and you can almost deal without having anything else turned on at all. Um, but there we go, there, there's the basics. Um, if I can be bothered, if I can find the time, maybe I'll do a bit more of an advanced tutorial for those people who want to really delve into all the extra layers and all the other cool stuff they added. But uh, yeah, just to answer all the people who keep emailing me, this is what you need to do for reflectance. Get rid of the specular, add a Beckman layer, which, which becomes layer number one, by the way. And then all you need to know is that this is the strength of your reflection. The roughness will choose how soft or sharp the reflection will get and throw a little bit of color in if you're trying to get some nice gold or bronze or copper or some sort of other metal. Um, not gonna mention it too much in this video, but just so you're aware, your next step if you're looking to sort of go beyond this and find some more fancy effects, you would want to start looking at the uh, layer Fresnel or Fresnel if you wanna be posh. Um, this will allow you to sort of fade the reflections in and out across the front and the side of the objects. But anyway, that's a topic for another time. Maybe it'll be in the next video. Have a look, maybe I've already recorded it. Just one more thing to add. If you've enjoyed this video, then hop on over to 3dfluff.com where we've got our range of other videos for you. If you're after any other help on any other topic, do drop us an email at the address you see below and maybe I'll make a video about it in the future.